do you have this problem called overspending like okay this is how it goes you get paid and then after some times you're like what the heck where did my money go actually and what exactly can i do so that at least i realize where my money is going so this is quite a popular menace that is hovering a lot of people and people actually wondering what can i do so by the way guess what today on this video right now and i'm dare you i'm gonna share this information with you for free i'm gonna show you five steps on what you can be able to do so that you can cure completely this overspending i dare promise you this if you watch this video to the end and if you do not get an information that you know uh cannot be able to help you i dare reward you the time that you've lost Anyway, let's get into the business. But don't forget, if it's your first time watching me, I am Joseph, talk about money investment and anything related to exactly that. And I usually post a video each and every day. And this is what you can do so that you don't miss it. Okay? Down below there, there is a small button written, subscribe, hit that magical button, and also squeeze that like button for me out there. Just for free. That's the only thing I want from you as a reward. Let's get into the business. Now, now, here are the points that I'm going to share with you on what you can be able to do. And by the way, if you've been watching for me for quite a while, there is something I always discourage. And that's actually the point number one. The point number one is none other than have what? Do not ever, ever, ever don't have what we call idle money. Don't have idle money. I know you have ever heard of me talking about this. Allow me to echo it for the not the last time i'll still talk about it don't have the idle money what do i mean by the idle money it's uncommitted money it's a money that is not even communicated to the money does not even understand where it has to go the money just resting maybe either on your bank or if you come from kenya in your mpesa it's just out there doing nothing so what you're supposed to do is that have what we call the committed money you get in fifty thousand at the end of the month then you already know 10 goes for the rent five goes for the water six goes for the x six for you get what i'm saying so every coin that comes in your door it's actually committed and knows exactly where to go the reason why you overspend is because hey let's say something passes by you see a basket of popcorns you want to grab it why you want to grab it because you do have some money somewhere at your disposal which is non-committed then at that particular point you get yourself you know what you know spending that specific money this is the problem you might have the what we call the consumer mindset and then you have the availability of the money so your weakness in terms of the expenditure then meets the availability of the uncommitted money then therefore you're gonna go ahead and be able to consume that money so what exactly do you do minimize if not eradicating the actual thing of having what you call the idle money if you get rid of this one even if you still have the problem of consumer mentality but you do not want you can get the money to spend on then at the end of the day your money is safe it's as simple as that all right and by the way you ask okay fine what do i do not to have a committed money or rather an idle money simple pick yourself some things that you can be able to be doing with your money you can get into stocks you can get into shares you can get into businesses you can get to assets you can get into just get something that actually requires money that you know gets like sort of dries your basket but i'm not saying like you should never ever 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 have money no that's not what i mean i mean like having that money that is not committed let's get to the point number two the point number two is that if you realize that goals that you see, that point is actually having new goals having what new goals let's say for example the things that you're doing um you've already paid your rent you've actually sub uh, subscribed to that uh you know sort of a loan repayment or whatever the thing that you're doing out there you've paid your school fees your utilities and whatever and then you feel the goals that you did say you'll be committing are actually way achievable if you have achieved the previous goals then there is no problem have new ones have new ones see so what i mean is this but what i mean is this let's say you said uh i'll be committing into paying for the purposes of acquiring an asset somewhere and then after acquiring that an asset then you realize hey the money that you used to channel towards repayment of that asset is actually available for you then have a new goal keep on renewing your goal keep on renewing your goal because the moment you get yourself into this level whereby you feel like hey all the things that i have I've, I've already achieved them have you ever seen some people who usually eat they're okay with eating they dress they pay their school fees they pay their utilities uh you know they help they use the thing called the black tax and what have you they have committed all those things but again they do not have new challenges and the worst thing that you can ever do in life is to have that thing called comfort if you get yourself into a situation whereby you're feeling comfortable everything is okay you're not committed to anything newer and so so kind of a thing then you're gonna get yourself into problems so having yourself the new goals then it gives you new tasks so that at least they, it can keep you on the toes and therefore can minimize if not eradicating you overspending your money because by the way if you were to dissect this overspending kind of a uh, overthink these are people who usually possess a certain mentality called 
mindset or you know consumer mindset or consumerism consumerism is quite a popular thing that is out there all right are you still with me did you squeeze that uh, you know like button absolutely if you did then congratulations now let's get to the next point the next point or the point number three it's actually none other than justify your spendings justify can you be able to justify your spending justify your spendings you know your spendings okay so whatever you spend your money before you even purchase that specific item ask yourself okay fine what would like gain from this specific thing and by the way this can go hand in hand with point number four where we talk about the 10 seconds rule if you've ever watched me a certain video i did made and i said hey guess what there's something called the 10 seconds rule this is a rule that you're supposed to incorporate way before purchasing any item out there say you show up in a supermarket or hypermarket market or whatever that place then you grab that thing that you want to buy you ask yourself always have 10 seconds to ask yourself okay fine i want to buy this thing okay now uh, what problem am i intending to solve with this specific item okay fine okay this time item cost ten thousand. okay fine do i afford to get this amount uh, this item yes i do okay fine this ten thousand. if i was to channel this money into a different location will i get a better deal than this one yes or no and again by the way if i don't get this item what problem will i face those kind of things so if you ask yourself those challenging questions then you realize most of the things that usually grab poor we actually don't need them but as i say for example and i love giving this example Perhaps you've ever heard of me talking about it. I'm going to repeat it so that you get what I'm saying. Let's say you're addicted to coffee. Every time you get yourself to those coffee places, grabbing those coffees like frequently in a week. And then here you are in a supermarket. You want to buy a coffee making machine. And then you ask yourself, okay, fine. I want to grab this coffee making machine for an X amount of money. Now, what problem do I intend to solve? Well, because I do love coffee. I'm addicted to coffee. Okay, fine. Then, aha, uh -huh. what if what will be the difference between you taking those coffees from those cafes vis-a-vis -vis you preparing back from your home? okay fine uh, if i do this then i'm gonna actually solve more money or rather save more money because it cost me and this and see if you justify yourself on that means then at the end of the day that coffee making machine stands to be bought because the reasons to why you should buy it is actually outsmarts or outshines the reason why you shouldn't grab it but the moment you get yourself in a situation whereby you got yourself like a million pairs of shoes and you want to grab as more and more and more because you see we human beings we surely have that void that can never be filled if right now i ask you how much money are you looking for and if we're given that money you say like you are satisfied we do not have that definite figure but what we do is that we compartmentalize see we compartmentalize the specific goals and milestones that we achieve let's say you've been looking forward to getting like a hundred million or ten million or a hundred thousand or whichever the amount of money and then you get a certain section of that money you celebrate you enjoy yourself and you celebrate that milestone you be gratitude you know it's always good to have that gratitude and again you achieve the next have the gratitude you achieve the next i've ever seen this kind of a guys who usually work from you know like so 24 7 these guys are actually working each and every time they don't even have time for themselves that is actually becoming the slaves of the money and you're supposed to have one thing you're supposed to have a combination of the money and also the dignity at the same time so before you actually buy anything justify your spending so that at least you can be able to track back where your money is going otherwise if you go there and every time you're buying the thing you don't even reason usually reason after buying then you're gonna get yourself into lots of problems okay let's go to the next point by the way talking of the next points basically it's like i'm adding you other points okay now the, the the next point the point number five is actually revisit your friends whom you're having revisit your what revisit you know your friends that you're having your friends what do i mean i know you are like what does the friends has to do with me spending my money let me tell you one secret have you ever heard of people say hey birds of a feather flock together absolutely see if you hang around with the people who talk about investments all right it means that again you're still gonna talk about investments if you hang around with winners you're gonna be the next winner if you hang around with just guys who talk about spending you know throwing parties and night outs and what have you probably that is what you're gonna incorporate in yourself so if you hang around with people who are indisciplined when it comes to money probably because they have more or they are basically indisciplined just like i did indicate at the beginning so therefore it means that you're gonna actually go ahead and grasp that specific character because we say some of the characters of whom who are some of the characters that we usually see around it's actually contagious so that's the point so one thing you're supposed to revisit your friends ask yourself okay the type of friends that i'm having are they investment oriented are they this kind of a guy who loves spending and all those kind of things so the moment you start asking yourself those real questions you can now realize hey guess what at this particular situation or state therefore i need or i ought to change my friends 
and therefore get myself who are guys who actually talk about investments how you can be able to manage your money because let me tell you one secret there is a thing that i'm avoiding to outline it here obviously i know i could have said uh, budget for your money I, but i know that one may not make sense at the end of the day because i know you've been hearing it for millions of years but the point is this budgeting if, if if there's no problem with you budgeting if today i tell you hey go ahead take a pen and paper start budgeting you'll go ahead and do so but the problem is do you have the discipline and the consistency to actually you know help you go ahead and achieve that budgeting that you're actually doing out there so what do i mean i mean is that get yourself people who can actually influence you positively in achieving that what you say it is the ultimate thing as far as the growth and development is concerned so i tell the time make sure that at least you revisit the type of friends that you're having and again for for example personally i got no friends what i have are strategic people people whom we help each other on different areas and on different things those are the guys whom you're supposed to have out there okay the last one but not the least basically a bonus on that is that stop being emotionally attached to your money stop being emotionally attached to your money all right i don't mean like hate your money no 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 no. what i mean by this point is that at all the occasion before you utilize your money before you spend your money ask yourself fine is this decision based on my logic or is it based on my feelings emotions i've ever seen these kind of guys whom you try to advise them not really advising them but at least you're just you know thinking out out loud out there and they're telling you it's my money why would you advise me let me do my things and all those kind of things or maybe they're the middle of the month and they're like hey guess what this month has been been the toughest one you know being rained on and all those kind of things rubbing shoulders with the manager or the ceo or the boss or employer or whatever the people or maybe my acquaintances whom we work with and all those kind of things and then this guy they usually say they usually say hey guess what the moment i grab that money hey i'm gonna enjoy myself and i'm gonna make myself best out of the money so you see you're emotionally attached to your money and the moment you keep on having that sort of a character deep inside of you you always regret guess what i know i've ever thought said about you and i'm gonna to repeat it again there are two organs that you have inside of your body that responds differently when it comes to money a you have yourself the brain the brain is actually the logical aspect of yourself this is where you usually think about money before you do anything you're like okay fine before i do this by the way i can invest this money before i do this i can you think yourself okay and this is not a thing you know when you think in most cases when you think you tend to do like those upright things they don't really make you happy and the other way around we have the heart which is another organ and responds differently when it comes to money this is when you feel about the money hey it is the holiday season i'm gonna take myself out i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this i wanna make myself happy you feel the emotions and all those kind of things so the point is this at all the occasion both the organs are essential and important but you have to know at what time will i engage either okay so it is good to make sure that you understand the working of those two organs independently anyway guess guys guess what guys that marks the end of my video on this specific one but guess what's not the end of me posting a video each and every day hit that subscription button like the video and also don't forget my number is always on the description of this specific video and my email as well so you can shoot me an email or you can call me we talk about businesses and that's how we do it for now so goodbye see ya in the next one